Teachers are being challenged in so many ways at the moment that looking after yourself is now more important than ever before. A teacher who prioritises their wellbeing using a variety of strategies to cope with the inevitable stress is more likely to be resilient when the going gets tough. And that really is now. And also more likely to be an inspiring role model for your students as well as for your colleagues. I'm providing a series of videos on how to maintain your wellbeing during this time of COVID-19. So please click like and subscribe to my channel so that you can receive notifications of all the videos. In this video, I'm going to share five strategies that you can easily incorporate into your day to manage the completely understandable stress you may find yourself in at the moment. My name's Mari Amaro, and I'm a teacher and a parent. And I want to share what I've learned over the more than 30 years I've been working with students and supporting teachers. Teacher wellbeing is my passion. I know how hard teachers work. And I know that many teachers need to be given permission to take care of them. Many teachers are feeling overwhelmed, stressed, time poor, incompetent and really frustrated. For teachers who love to see and interact with their students daily, this presents a whole different way of working and building relationships. And for those new teachers who barely had time to practice their craft and develop skills that they need for classroom teaching, this is an even bigger challenge. Teaching is a very social situation. We work with students, with colleagues, parents, and we're surrounded by people for most of the day. All our ways of teaching and learning have been turned on their heads. And teaching can get on top of us at the best of times. So it's important to be aware of how you can deal with the overwhelm and manage your emotions in this really tricky time. So here are five quick and effective tips to increase teacher wellbeing and manage your own emotions at this time. And if you have some helpful wellbeing tips that you can share, please add them to the comments section below. These are wellbeing tips that you can use on the spot, in the moment, when the stress creeps in. Number one, breathe. This is one, you know, we really forget to do and can find ourselves shallow breathing when we're feeling stressed. Simply taking a deep breath when you feel overwhelmed can help you calm. Taking a breath has a positive effect because when you breathe deeply, it sends a message to your brain to calm down and relax. When you are stressed, your body responds with increased heart rate, faster breathing and higher blood pressure. Deep breathing makes your body feel like it does when you are relaxed, kind of tricks the brain and the body. Number two, move. Even just 10 minutes of moderate exercise can make a difference to your state of mind. If you can do it with your class, even better. Dance, run, hop, skip, jump, walk, wriggle and jiggle. And this is even more important during this time when you're going to be in front of your computer so much more than you normally are. Adding movement to your day in an intentional and purposeful way is crucial. Go for a walk, jump up and down on the spot, put music on and dance. This is a really important time for you to be doing that because you're going to be sitting. You're not going to get the incidental exercise that you normally get, walking around the classroom, checking up on kids, walking in the corridors, going between classes, doing playground duty. None of those things are there for you now. So this is a really important time to remember that sitting for a really long period of time can mean that you end up in pain. Number three, laugh. I've seen some really funny memes on social media about how people are dealing with the challenges of COVID-19 and having a good laugh can really change how I feel. I can get overwhelmed sometimes because I like to keep up to date on what's happening so I 
watch the news on television and I listen to the news on the radio and I listen to current affairs. But then seeing something funny or listening to something funny can get me out of the overwhelm and the stress that that can build up. Getting your students to come up with the task of a funny story that they can share in the group is really good. Doing a laughing ex exercise, which is something you might do when you were in the classroom where everybody just laughs and hearing someone laugh can trigger your laughter too, which feels better. It's just all funny because emotions are contagious and that's something we really need to be aware of for ourselves as well. Number four, connect. Relationships are the best indicator of levels of well-being. And in a longitudinal study of a group of men, the ones with positive relationships were healthier and more likely to live longer. Connecting with your students by listening to them and sharing something of yourself can help to develop that sense of connectedness. And usually um, in our normal daily work, sometimes teaching can be very isolated as well. But at the moment, you may feel more isolated than ever. The experts are saying that we are physically distancing but staying connected socially. And they're saying that for a really good reason. We need to feel connected to each other to maintain good levels of well-being. This is an important time for you to connect with colleagues and ask for help if you need it. Collaboration between teachers is even more important so that workload is reduced to manageable levels. And while we know that connection is important, it can be even more challenging in this time because we have less face-to-face -face contact with people. Just as with our exercise, our incidental contact is not happening anymore. So we need to really think about how we incorporate that into our day. I'm making sure that I speak to at least one member of my family every day and a friend every other day because I'm needing that contact because I'm not getting it. So think about how you can do that with your friends and family and colleagues. On the other hand, at this time, we are so fortunate because we can FaceTime with people. We can use technology to our advantage. It's not just phone calls anymore. We can actually see people. We can play games with other people. We can even watch videos together. We can watch movies together. So this, and we can do that in ways with our friends, family and colleagues in a way that would have been completely unimaginable 30 years ago. And that brings me to my final tip. Number five, be grateful. I was in the supermarket late last year and feeling really stressed because I don't particularly like going to the supermarket and I was in a rush. I felt really annoyed by the fact that I had to use the self-serve aisle. I find that really aggravating. And then I made a mistake in my order and was charged the wrong amount. And I could feel myself getting more and more annoyed, especially because then I had to go to a different counter to get a refund. And I felt so bad when I left the supermarket that I reflected on why that was and that I didn't want to feel that way. I then thought about all the good things about going to the supermarket. There's so much variety of goods. I can afford to buy whatever I want. The environment is clean and pleasant. I have access to healthy food as well as treats. Um, the people who work at the supermarket are pleasant and helpful. And when I realised how fortunate I am, I resolved to stop being so negative when I'd go to the supermarket and start enjoying the fact that I have so much. I felt really bad then thinking about what I have in comparison to what other people in the world have that I need to feel grateful. And the difference here is it's between focusing on what you don't have rather than what you do have. And it's important for kids to get this message too, especially in these times when we can feel really restricted. Introducing a gratitude exercise with your class, like a gratitude journal or a gratitude check-in or getting them to reflect at the end of a lesson on one thing that is great in their lives at the moment can really help. There's a large body of research to show the benefits of gratitude and gratitude practices. And that's because a gratitude practice 
gets you to think of the good things in your life. And thinking of good things makes you feel good. Writing and talking about things that you're grateful for has positive effects on your well-being and levels of stress in your own life. So what are the strategies that you've found to help you manage your well-being? Please share in the comments section below. This is a time for us to share and look after each other. We need to accept that teacher stress, stress is going to happen. And being prepared to manage your own well-being is crucial to dealing with all the additional demands effectively. So having some simple strategies that you can use at any time of the day will increase your well-being as well as helping your students. Thanks for watching. Happy teaching.